Hey everyone, welcome to part 29 in this FXS Lowrider Restoration Series. If you're first joining us, you could click on this link in the top right corner. It'll take you to a listing of all the videos. You could click on the first link, or whatever link you left off from, and continue from there. In our last video, we finally replaced the rear brake line, attempted to install the ignition, but a Hall Effect sensor cracked. While waiting on new ignition, replaced a starter relay cable, and installed the starter relay. Also put the trim on the oil tank. When the new ignition did arrive, it was installed, along with the coil, wired in, installed the battery, installed the regulator, refreshed the rear light, tested out all of the electrical, and finally static timed the ignition. In this video, we're going to be installing the intake manifold and associated parts, as well as the carburetor and an s, &S Stealth Air Filter Kit. We got a lot to do, so let's get started. In the previous build, I had these two-piece brass brackets for the manifold rubber seals, and I had significant problems with air leaks and crimping, as we see here. I'm not going to be reusing them. Instead, I'm going to use the ones that are recommended by s and and I'll show you them. The rubber ring fits perfectly inside the clamp without any area that could crimp it, and I found it on JMP for $16, which I believed was for a set because it said clamps, but you look close and you find out it's for each. I really wasn't happy about this after the fact, but I did find this exact model on Amazon. The TBC 238 is actually $7.60, so I'll tell you to save your money and buy it on there anyway. But I had to wait for it to arrive, so I decided now be a good time to do the other chain tension on the low side. And I'm going to use a socket extension to push the bolt through in the rear that's holding everything and the shims and the bearings and the tire together so nothing falls apart since I have to take it out. So I've already jacked up the bike to remove the stress. Now I'm just pulling the shaft out as I chase it behind with the extension. So everything is actually still together. And this is now removed. And I'll just put this off to the side. We can see the end of the socket extension just inside the wheel and the other side just sticking out. This allows me to remove the old unit. Really rusty and probably not long for this world. The new one required a little bit of sanding on the driveway. This addressed some imperfections you'd find in this older swing arm. Keep going. At this point, the wife is on the other side, jacking it up back into position. A little more. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. And this allowed the cleaned and grease shaft to be reinserted back into the unit without any issue. As it's inserted, the socket extension is slowly removed. Sometimes this requires a little finesse of rotating of the entire wheel. This also means aligning this chain tensioner to the one on the other side in order to get that shaft back through. I'm also going to have to lower the jack back down to align it because I can see at which point it's going to fall into place. And there it is. Now I can push it through and we're done. Acetone is used to get any grease off the threads to ensure they're perfectly clean. I'm using a grade 8 washer this time, followed by the lock washer and then the nut. I'm not going to tighten anything down yet, we're just going to leave it just snug. Grease will be applied to these threads as it was the entire sliding mechanism. Place the chrome end cap back on, followed by the adjuster screw, and then we'll take the slack out of the unit. This is good enough for now. The half price manifold clamp has arrived from Amazon, we see right here. It's exactly the same as the one from JP Cycles, except half the price. I'm still annoyed by this, but at least you guys will know that you could get one for half the price. We could also see my other manifold was the O-ring type and not the rubber band type. So I've replaced it with the newer correct rubber band type, but I'm going to have to port it for VOES. Right here we can see that there's a dimple for that. I'll be using a Type C bit for the tap that I'm going to need to do this. There's very little clearance in here for the bob fitting that I want to use. But I picked up a tap just for that bob fitting, and I do have enough room to do so. So there we are. I used Teflon tape when securing the bob fitting, but I also used green Loctite wicking, so that should hold it. I've also done some checks to make sure it was airtight. And pull out these paper towels now. And these rubber bands right here would go right over here over these ports. But I'm going to use some Jax 327 to treat these rubber rings first. Okay. 
and a little bit on the aluminum itself. Now we'll place the rings over. Followed by the clamps facing downward with the screws pointing back. Now put in the manifold, putting it in one side first and then negotiating it into another side, allowing one of the O-rings to flex a little bit and pop into place. So just push it and there we go. These take an 11 mil. I'm using it just to take the extra slack out. I'm not tightening these down yet by any means. Where these screws face should provide access to the other screws around it. And we can see it's still loose. I could wiggle it up and down because like I said, only the slack is removed. This is not tightened. And I'll drop my paper towel back in because we're going to have to go to Ace and buy more stuff. I'll just put a little one right here too. Why not? And while I'm there, I want to take this piece with me too. This needs to be buckled down, but this high visibility screw just bothered me for whatever reason. So it was on my list of things to replace. So there we go. They only had it in grade eight, so grade eight it is. And that'll allow me to secure down these hoses from the uh, previous project. So that's done. I now have this vacuum fitting adapter and this pre-cut hose from the VOES makes its way down to this bob fitting, another piece of hose that I'll now cut. And this now connects the VOES directly to the manifold, completing this portion of the project. And we can see how it travels up and around directly to the VOES. This brings us to carb jetting. This carb has already been rebuilt in a video, chapter six, link posted in the top right if you're interested. But like I said, we're just gonna check the jetting and adjust if necessary. So I'm going to open up the bottom here. We're going to have a look right quick and see what we're dealing with. You don't have to remove all the screws, just the one needed to get the bottom cover off. We'll pull it off gently. We don't want to break nothing. And we're looking at 68 on the main jet and 295 on the mid range. And it calls for 72 for a new build and 295 so this one is okay but this one we're gonna have to go up a few I have a 72 right here from storage I'm gonna have to clean it up a bit so it's nice and polished we'll wash it off and it's ready for installation we'll pop out the old one And drop in the new one. And snug it down. And that's it. We could close everything up. We're done. Carefully line everything up. Seat it. Put our screws back in. We'll listen that the float is free, moving up and down. Then I'll blow into the fuel valve in the upside down and regular position to ensure that there are no leaks. <coughs> this cob is ready to go. And this jet goes back into storage. I picked up the stealth kit from s, &S so I wouldn't have to use that ugly ass teardrop cover. So we're going to take a look at it right quick. Here's the model number for those interested. Most of the parts come locked away inside the air filter, as you could hear. Except for a packet of Loctite with some screws and whatnot, and the instructions. I'll use an 8mm to remove this center nut. It only exists to hold on an air filter cover. I'm not going to be using this nut actually because the air filter cover I'm going to use has a different shape head. These M4s actually hold everything together. So we're going to remove these now.
and this top cap actually has a shape to channel air. It's also the cap that holds everything together, like I said, all the parts are in here. This is for the enrichener. This is for the mount for the manifold. Here's a gasket. This is the filter itself. We can see it's like a K&N filter, cotton with oil. Looks like a nice filter. And here's that back plate. We're going to put on the enrichener or choke circuit, whatever you want to call it now. We'll get these parts in order for installation. The wobble washer, the metal washer, the nylon washer, the handle, the nylon washer, the brass bushing, and the screw, and an extra screw. Place the bushing on the screw. Nylon washer on the bushing so it seats. Then the handle over that nylon washer will just rest it. Then we'll set up on this side on the nylon washer, the metal washer, and then the wobble washer on the metal washer. Take those three pieces and fit it over this fitting on the backing, just like that. Put a little Loctite on the screw for the other cluster of parts. Place the handle on and then put that screw over it with the parts and then start turning it in. Once it starts seating, check the handle every so often as it's a friction fit. If it's not tight enough, give it a couple more turns. Recheck the handle again. If it's too loose, then the choke's going to come off on its own from vibration. So you don't want it too tight, but you don't want it loose at all. There we go. On to the next item. These are the parts for the mounting bracket for the manifold and carburetor. We'll take a look at them now. This pin right here locks in, allowing for variation in height adjustment. This is where we connect to the case bolt. Here's where the bracket set screw goes. And this is how it works. We can see how the first portion of the bracket is situated right here, held in by the case bolt. We're going to have to remove this bolt now. Mine is non-standard quarter inch, so I'm going to put it in here to hold it. The other side is half inch, so I'm just going to loosen off this acorn nut and remove it. Push the whole bolt right back through and just slowly pull it out this side. After inspecting the bolt is fine, I test it in the bracket for good fit. I see this is okay. Everything looks good. Place the bracket in position, put the bolt back through. Immediately I realize there's a problem because now the bolt is too short. I went to Ace to the rescue again, helped me out with a longer bolt. So using the longer bolt, I repeat the process. And now we have too much thread, but that's fine. So I'm going to set up everything and I'm showing you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to tighten down this nut and I actually will benefit from this because I want to hold it from my clutch cable in the future. So I'm going to mark it with enough threads to put on that bracket. I'll remove it, then I'll cut it and then I'll reinstall it just like this. Now I'm going to take the slack out of this. I have a wrench on this side to hold in position. That's half inch. Come around the other side with a ratchet while holding it and remove that slack. I just want to make sure that detent stays in position to hold this thing straight. I'm not trying to buckle it down just yet. Clearance is checked with this carb bolt. Make sure there's no binding. I've gone through and reviewed, made sure everything was straight, including making sure that the seals on the manifold were tight. Now it's time to tighten these down. Holding this half inch now. I'm going to tighten this so that I take all of the slack out and snug it down a bit. I'm going to test again with that bolt, pushing it back and forth, making sure it doesn't bind. Now we're going to torque down the case bolt. That's going to be 160 inch pounds. I'm going to hold this in place with the half inch. And from the other side, I'm going to use the inch pound torque wrench to torque it down to 160 inch pounds. Everything tightened now from the bottom here up through the center. Checked here for binding is good. These have been checked, tightened. They're good. The rubber rings have been checked to make sure they're still in center of these brackets. This is flush. This phenolic space will be cleaned. A new seal will be put in. This allows so that heat doesn't transfer into the cob. And now it's all cleaned up, ready to be installed. 
So we're putting it in now. We'll remove this paper towel. And clean up the mating surface first for any oil or debris. And it goes right over those two bolts. But as I put it in, I realize that there's a minor issue. And that issue is with the new bracket, that bottom bolt. I'm seeing it now. That bottom bolt is too short. So I'm going to have to go back to Ace. Get along a bolt. Ace had the identical bolt, quarter inch longer. Also picked up another special bolt I needed for later. So now we're going to test it, push it through. Through the phenolic material as well. The fitment is good. Pull out our paper towel. I have a new O-ring for the back of the cob. I'm going to put that same treatment on this O-ring. I'm going to put a little bit on the back of the phenolic material. Then I'm going to seat the O-ring by going around in a circle till it's fully seated. That way it's evenly seated within the recess of the carburetor. I'll load the cob down in the front while from the back I'll start screwing in those two bolts just to get it threaded to hold it in position. And then I will snug them down so the cob is fully seated onto the manifold. Then those two bolts will be tightened to specification. This bolt I left in here was part of the old bracket, no longer used. I'm just going to remove it. And I'm now going to guide the throttle cable down into position so that I can get this installed before any more further work is done. I still have room, so I'm going to get this little clip in here. And then up above on the handlebars, I'm just going to tighten down that screw to elongate the cable. And now we're going to test it out. And there we go, throttle's good, I'll lock that down. I still don't know if this is the correct position. If it's wrong, I'm going to have to remove it, but it's good for now. This particular setup requires a slight modification to the gasket as specified in the instructions. We'll make two cuts here to remove a small portion. Right over here, this side. Then we'll flip it over. Then we'll cut this little piece off. We don't need it. Gets in the way. We'll test it out now. And now it fits without any obstruction. So we'll now take the three provided screws that came with this kit, removed from the bag, and we're going to install them into this unit. They need to be screwed in, and then they'll sit freely. We'll wiggle them. And there's a little bit of effort to get them in, as there's some powder coat on the threads of the holes that were machined, but that's fine. And then once we get all three of them installed in there, it provides a place to put that gasket over, and we're ready to bring this into the garage. For installation. A little bit of blue Loctite will be applied to the threads of the three screws. First the enrichener will be lined up for the handle and then the screws will be tightened in by hand to remove the slack and then I'll use Allen wrench to work it in and finally I'm going to snug them down because it's only about five foot pounds as specified in the instructions. And this plate is on there. I test out the original. It works just fine. If it was too loose or tight, I'd have to take off the plate to readjust. And now I add the overflow line for the bowl. I'm going to route this below and to the front. And that'll be finalized when I finalize all of the hose and wire fittings in that section. The filter is now introduced. Just placed on. The two screws are hand tightened once it's lined up. Then it's screwed down progressively with a number four hex key. And then snugged. Here's a special bolt we picked out at Ace for the exact bevel of my air filter. And I removed just enough threads that it'll fit perfect. This also required countersinking a bevel, so I used my smallest bevel tool to do that. I'll demonstrate the modifications. We installed the screw without a cover. And the bevel of the screw sits a couple of millimeters deeper than the face of the brass. All this works, so I don't have to use this teardrop SNS air filter cover with my SNS carb that I don't like, that everybody has, and put an original cover back on. Put a couple drops of blue Loctite on that screw. And after all this work, we can now put an original Harley round air filter cover back on a shorty E carburetor. So I'm going to tie it down now with this hex bolt. And make sure that it's straight with the logo with regard to the rest of the motorcycle. Everything's level.
and then I'll tighten it a couple of pounds. We'll get all the fingerprints off of this, and then we'll have a look at the finished product. I'm very pleased. I think it came out very elegant. I could keep the SNS carb without the Me Too air filter cover. And that concludes the manifold and carburetor install with the SNS Stealth Kit. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button. Be notified when other videos like this come out. When the next video comes out, a link will be posted here in the top right. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>